Academy of Mathematics and Science in Kentucky, Senior Honor tonight's reception. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pokey. I'm the Assistant Director of Counseling Services, and I'll be your host this evening. I would like to welcome all the parents, all the other family members, friends, faculty, and staff, and of course, the 2012 graduating class of GAD Academy. This is very informal tonight, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. Thank you for making the drive and setting aside your valuable time this weekend to help us celebrate the amazing achievements and the wonderful, the amazing achievements of the wonderful graduates that are sitting in the first several rows. <clears throat> Tonight you will get to see many of our staff members give presentations and awards to your graduates, followed up by some inspirational words by our director, Tim Guy. And the evening will commence with us attacking the food bar that's in the back. So we'll move things along so we can get closer to the food. We have 47 graduating seniors this year. Not everybody can attend this evening, but we will announce their honors as well to recognize their achievements this year. Okay, so as I knew that I would be opening up tonight's festivities, I've been thinking about what I wanted to say to you guys, the class of 2012. I've known you for two years. <coughs> I've taught all of you in some seminar classes, or some of you came to those. <laughs> I've had countless conversations with many of you for two years, and several of you actually made it through my Site 100 course. So the question is, what can I possibly say to you now? So my question for you is, have you ever heard the article titled, Advice, Like You, Probably Just Wasted on the Young, written by Mary Schmidt? Have you ever heard of that one? Good. That's good news. It was published in the Chicago, Chicago Tribune as a column in 1997, and is commonly called the sunscreen article. Both its subject and tone are similar to the 1927 poem Desirata by, by Max Aaron. The most popular and well-known um, form of this essay is a successful music single called Everybody's Free to Wear Sunscreen, released in 1999 by Baz Luhrmann. As a therapist and a counselor, psychologist, our training teaches us against the notion of giving advice. We should help our clients, we should help our students. We should teach them how to figure things out all by themselves and never tell them what to do. Well, tonight, I'm throwing that out. <laughs> the previously mentioned poem, song, as well as spending two years with each of you for the inspiration for the following pieces of advice. Are you ready? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the class of 2012, number one, wear sunscreen. If I could offer you only one tip for the future, sunscreen would be it. The long-term benefits of sunscreen have proved by scientists but the rest of us, my advice, really has no reliable experience other than the things that I have dealt with. I will dispense my advice now. However, this advice will only be used, will only be using famous quotes from the top 60 quotes in the world. And of course it's for that. Alright. Number two. The cure for boredom is curiosity. There is no cure for curiosity. That's what you say. Oh. Oh. Number three. <laughs> Courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the judgment that something else is more important than fear. Oh. <laughs> Number four. You can do anything, but you cannot do that. Oh. Number five. You miss 100% of the shots that you never take. Number six. Number six. You 
Fábio Dessa, eu Só o Fábio Dessa, eu vou ficar aqui. When hungry, eat your rice. The tire, close your eyes. Fools may laugh at me, but wise men and women will know what I mean. This is the long one. Listen to this. Watch your thoughts, because they become words. Watch your words, because they become actions. Watch your actions, because they become habits. Watch your habits, because they, they become character. Watch your character, because it becomes success. Number eight, work like you don't need money, love like you've never been hurt, and dance like no one's watching. Yeah. Number nine, fear less, hope more. Why less, breathe more. Talk less, say more. Hate less, love more. Number ten, just the fact that some geniuses were laughed at does not imply that all who are laughed at are geniuses. They laughed at Columbus, they laughed at Fulton, they laughed at the Wright brothers, but they also laughed at those of the clown. <laughs> okay. And finally, class of 2012, advice is what we ask for when we already know the answer, but we think we wish we did. Oh, and don't forget, Congratulations to everyone in the class of 2012. Alright, that was fun. Now it's time to move on with our program. If everybody has a program, if not, we have some programs up front. We can get some to you if you need to get a program like this. This will guide you this evening. Um, so again, welcome to everybody. What we'll be doing is we're going to be presenting several awards and achievements throughout the evening and then we'll follow by the college announcements for each graduate that's here. So first I'd like to introduce um, Beth Hawk is going to come forward and she's going to introduce the Future Business Leaders of America Awards.
last Derek Strode, our research guru, to come forward and present the research recognition. Damon Allison.
Tucker Joyce. Kirtland Kramer. Lori LaBelle. Sam McCain. Lucas Missick. Ben Rice. Katie Sapporta. Keaton Smith. Aaron Walsh. Wayne Webb. Annie Wheeler. Luke Yap. And Nick Zolman. Okay, and finally, there's four of you who think I forgot you, but I didn't. I wanted to wait until the end, because these students did something so exceptional that I really felt like they needed to be recognized separately. Um, these are the students who presented at least at four conferences. In some cases, seven. <laughs> Lydia Brothers. <laughs> Andrea Eastness. <laughs> Logan Eckler. Jack Ferguson. Let's give a hand to all of our students. We're moving along now. If I could have Beth come back up, please. Beth, uh, as you're learning, does a little bit of everything at the academy, and she's going to go over and give the recognition for community service program. Carlo. 
Farmer. But the 
Gatton Academy, which was the Kentucky Academy of Mathematics and Science at the time, was just still an idea. And it was an idea that we had a lot of hope in. An idea that we had a pretty good amount of faith in, too. Uh, and an idea, quite frankly, that over the next year, for those of us who came on board with the staff, could not been, have been more excited to see actualized. Uh, because it had been an idea that was sometime in the new year. But even still, in that first year, what I lovingly called year zero, as Tim and Jonathan Lennon and Brian Harris and I crisscrossed the state, in the spring and summer, other folks came on board. We had some good work ahead of us to do, and uh, I think as the, the representative from Intel who was visiting us yesterday said, five years ago, what has changed that you wouldn't have expected it to be? And I, I think there were some great examples around the table of what has caught us by surprise and caught us off guard. Uh, but I think more than anything else is that the idea has become meta. And so five years ago, when I first selected a group of avatars, um, I mulled around several different names, but ultimately chose an avatar because an avatar isn't a blue furry cat or an airbender, because now a waterbender, if you can go with the series. Uh, it's a manifestation of an idea. It is that idea or concept made real, portable, solid. And I can think of no better students than those this year who are avatars, because they give because they embody everything that we hope students can be, and certainly in everything that they do, they see the potential that all academy students have, not only to lead in their disciplines, but to ultimately have that change, not only here in Kentucky, but across the world as well. So, with that said, I'd like to recognize these 11 students. So, as I call your name, you'll just kind of line up for it, and then I'll present you with a small tip. Andrea Eastis. I have the uh, great privilege to work with two groups of our community leaders, um, both the community developers and those are the folks who make a difference day in, day out uh, on the residential wing of the building, and also our student government leadership. Um, and I'm sorry we cannot do anything about Cisco. <laughs> <laughs> That's been our number one topic for a long time. But um, first of all, I'm going to recognize our, S our four SGA leaders, and then I'll recognize our uh, community developers. And this week, I've been in interviews with our current juniors um, to select our new community developers. And I always ask a question. In every interview, has a current dad cabin community developer made a, a difference in your experience? And I just had to share this um, with guys over and over again this week. Uh, the name Samantha McCain came up. She uh, she did a great job in her role this year, as did all of them. But uh, um, I just like to share those good notes and, and know that you did make a difference for our. Uh, our current crop of juniors, and I know that uh, 
they will carry it forward as well. So if you'll oblige me, I'm going to step down again and uh, we'll just come up. First for the uh, student government leaders, Hannah Lord Fong. Lori Lovell. 
will be attending the University of Kentucky. He'll be studying chemistry and chemical engineering. Jordan Curie will be attending Western Kentucky University. Ali DiCarlo will be attending University of Louisville, studying engineering. Daniel Dilcher will be attending Purdue University, studying computer engineering. Andrea Eastis will be attending the University of Kentucky, pursuing biology. Logan Eckler will be going to Western Kentucky University to pursue chemistry. Marcus Ernst will be attending Miami University, Oxford, to pursue computer science. Brandon Farmer will be attending Western Kentucky University to pursue biology. Jack Ferguson will be attending Western Kentucky University to pursue ACS chemistry. Paul Fleischman will be attending Western Kentucky University to pursue chemistry. Alex Gutierrez will be attending University of Kentucky to pursue biology. Anthony Gutierrez will be attending the University of Kentucky to pursue biology. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy Hotry will be attending Western Kentucky University to pursue biology and chemistry as a pre-med major. Charlotte Hughes will be attending University of Rochester to pursue chemistry. Melanie Hurst will be attending the University of Kentucky. Tucker Joyce will be attending Vanderbilt University to pursue mathematics. Berlin Kramer will be attending the University of Texas, Dallas to pursue international political economy. Nathan Lasley will be attending Western Kentucky University. Taylor Lee will be attending Western Kentucky University. She will be pursuing English literature, French, and history. <laughs> Lori LaBelle will be attending Indiana University at Bloomington, and she'll be pursuing environmental science. Jesse Matherly will be attending University of Kentucky, and he will be pursuing agriculture biotechnology. Stephen Mattingly will be attending Western Kentucky University. Sam McCain will be attending Western Kentucky University, and she will pursue mathematics. Rachel Metcalf will be attending Vanderbilt University. She'll be pursuing biomedical engineering or environmental engineering. <laughs> Lucas Missett will be attending Harvard University. He'll be pursuing mathematics and computer science. Holly Morris will be attending the University of Alabama. She will be pursuing, pursuing biology. Ben Rice will be attending the United States Naval Academy. He will be pursuing business. David Sikora, he will be attending the University of Chicago to study mathematics. Ella Shelley will be attending the University of Kentucky to study biology. Keaton Smith will be going to Wor Wor Worcester Polytech Institute <laughs> to study computer science. WPI. Worcester. Caroline Stivers will be attending the University of Kentucky. She will be pursuing <coughs> chemistry and pre pharmacy. Austin Tang will be attending the University of Kentucky. She will be pursuing engineering, electrical, or mechanical. One of the three. Joey Tudor will be attending Western Kentucky University and pursuing systems management. Aaron Walsh will be attending Smith College and she'll study biology. John Warren will be attending Western Kentucky University to pursue sports management and business administration.
Lane Webb to be attending the University of Kentucky to pursue physics and math. Luke Yap will be attending the University of Kentucky to pursue mathematics. And Nick Zolman will be going to the California Institute of Technology. Okay. You're right here, I got you. I thought I'd mix it up a little bit. <laughs> Andy Wheeler. We have Andy now. Andy Wheeler will be going to Western Kentucky University and she'll be studying nursing. Did anybody else? <laughs> okay, that was a lot of up and down, a lot of name, probably mispronunciation, all those things. So thank you for your patience. Um, I'm going to introduce our director in just a second, and he'll give some words, and then we'll release you to the food. Um, but thank you so much for being here this evening. Um, graduates, what, Beth, what time do they need to be tomorrow? Noon in the lobby. Noon in the lobby. So moms, dads, grandparents, noon in the lobby, dressed and ready to go. Um, now Tim will probably not want me to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, he, a little bit earlier, around 5.30, he was at his own graduation. He got his doctorate tonight. So if we could give him a hand. Tim Gott. On the planet. It's on water. 
And it's this concept of this basic chemical equation of taking hydrogen and oxygen and it becomes water. And then being the other direction, taking water and breaking them apart and creating hydrogen and oxygen. And this work, which spanned over 34 years, has been simply on trying to understand and utilize the power that's in that equation. Because he believes it's the only way we're going to save our world. He believes that if we're going to move forward, fossil fuels are a limited resource. Water could be an eternal one. And it's understanding the power that's in that basic concept. And so my challenge to you all is to understand that you all are being equipped not necessarily to see the world in a completely new way. That's part of it. It's not just maybe creating new things. Maybe to truly understand things we take for granted. That when we look at a seed, I talked to another researcher, and he's at UK, and he wants to continue a research that we still don't understand. Why does a seed become a plant? Not how. We understand some of those basic fundamentals. They do not, no scientist can tell you at this point which seed is going to kick on and which is not. They can create the probability. They can put conditions so that 95% of the chance that this is going to take off. They don't understand the basic concept. When we think about the things around us on a daily basis, like the supermoon the other day, that was really cool. I was running all over my neighborhood trying to get the best shot of some tree or some house. My camera would shake. I need to learn how to become a photographer. But anyway, I enjoyed watching it rise over the trees. I don't understand why things rotate why there is some issue in our universe, whether it's black energy, black matter, or dark energy, dark matter. This expanding universe, I stood out and looked at Venus a couple nights ago. It just feels like you have to reach up and grab it. I don't understand that, but I want to. And so what I'd really like to see you all take with you or through five <coughs> Now, in the last few years, I come up with all kinds of weird things. But this year is five. And I hope you're thinking in develop completely integrates these five seeds. The first seed is critical thing. You all have experienced that. If you're taking math and science classes, CPS. <laughs> Don't say anything, they're back there, they're watching. Uh, you are doing critical thinking. Analyzing a problem. You know, our world needs you for that. Because if the answers were there, we'd already be okay. There is no back of the book in these cases. You can't make some of these things up. You have to go and figure it out. You've got to determine what the solution is. Your critical thinking is going to be powerful. And that may be more of your left brain. The right brain is the creative thinking. Can you take the water model and see it in a different way? Can you envision how to make a better chair? Can you envision how to make a better cell phone? Can you envision never having to use a phone? What if our phone was grafted into our palm or into our wrist? And if you just wanted to talk to someone, think about it. We're not far from that guy. We now are able to tap into the 
biological neuro uh, neuro neurological I think is what I'm trying to say. We can now take an electrode and tap into an optic nerve. Somebody who's never seen sees what? Something is changing in our world. You've got to have both the critical and the creative. And whether you love it or not, that's CPS really is all about. It was to break you out of the textbook world, to change your thinking that learning is from a book, that it is from a equation, that someone in the classroom is going to get up and tell you something, and you get it. And it's internalized and you're the happiest person on the planet. It's really about finding all of that stuff out there. Let the foundation work for you. There's nothing wrong with what we have in our books. It is just the basic of where you can go. And if we don't break out of that thinking, if you break out of those 15 pound books, to see the world as your text to see the world as your internet and be able to plug the information that you use. Those are the big two. Another thing about CPS was collaborative. Some of you are really good at working with others. Okay? However, we are not, as John does said, we're not islands. It might be the four keys, I don't know, there's some bridges there, but we are connected. And relationships, as you all know, I believe are the most important thing on the planet. It is how we work together that makes all the difference in the world. And it is not easy. We have so many things that can get in the way of that. But when it works well, it's phenomenal what you do. And so being in those situations, Situations and working through the, the roughness and the friction that develops is critical. The fourth one I would tell you is contextual. And this one really, I'm trying to develop it in my head a little bit more, but I've always felt like nothing has meaning except in context. I would challenge you to put what you beginning to learn in proper context. To see the world, as Pokey shares with us a lot of times, to open up your mind and be aware and embrace the diversity around us. That we see each other and we see the opportunities. And put it in the proper context. So if you want to have a powerful mathematical equation really only has meaning and context. If you really want to understand basic principles of economics and history and philosophy, you've got to put it in context. That's the context of not only your world and your side, but the world around you. Which leads me then to the last one is compassion. That is the thread that we don't hear much about, but I believe is what brings it all together. If what you're doing is simply a exercise in intellectual power, you're wasting your time. It's okay to do that, but in ultimate, your work has to be for the good of those around you. That you need to see, no matter what it is you do, you need to see it as an act of service. That you are trying to make some section of this world a little better place. If you do that, you will be empowered in everything you do. Doesn't mean it's always going to work, and it doesn't mean that everybody's going to appreciate that. But do it anyway. Because when it's all said and done, and you're sitting on the back side of life and you're looking at what you've accomplished. Nobody's really going to care what you've done. Unless 
they know you care. Unless you have someone there to be holding your hand and letting you know that they love you because you don't care. And as we finish up here, my gift for you is a little different this year. Matter of fact, you may want to return it after you finish. But uh, <laughs> give me just a second. <clears throat>